Hello, hello, hello. Hello. As always, we hope that you can hear us tonight. Hello, Camilla. Camilla. Hope you're feeling better. Hello, Elder Charles. Glad you stopped by tonight. As always, <clears throat> we're not going to be with you long tonight. Hope everybody's had a great day. Somebody just let me know how the sound is doing. Hello, Janice. <clears throat> Glad you're here, Janice. Um, I don't know what the weather is like where you are. I think it fooled a lot of us. It's been cold. It's been raining. It's been sun. It's been... A little bit of everything, but we are yet still grateful. Russell, thank you for joining tonight. Um, we are yet still grateful, and we're just thankful that we are just here one more time. Elvis Broomfield is in the house from the Christian Airs. Thank you, Mr. Elvis, for joining us tonight. Like I said, we're not going to be with you long tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we might have touched on this subject before. But we're going to do it again because I think it's important that we be mindful in this day and time of who we take advice from, who we listen to. When you get a chance tonight or in your spare time, read First Kings, uh, the 12th chapter. We're particularly tonight looking at the 8th verse. Again, can somebody tell me how the sound is because I, I can't hear myself, so I don't know. But First Kings, <clears throat> the 12th chapter and the 8th verse, you know, it, we're talking tonight about the choices that we make in life and how they can have an effect on us and not only us, but those around us. It, it, we're talking about every choice we make ought to line up and be examined with the word of God. Hey, Rita, how you doing? Uh, examine those things against the word of God. I believe that it's important for us to understand that we just can't take advice from anybody. Uh, I think it's under, important that we understand that the choices we make have a consequence. Uh, we make the wrong choices. They can lead us down wrong directions. If we make the wrong choices, it can lead other people who are around us uh to fall into traps and make wrong decisions. In other words, everything that we do ought to be examined by the word of God. When we look at 1 Kings, let's look at the 8th verse in particular. It says, but he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and stood before him. What is wrong with this picture? Here we see this king who is about to go before the people. And at first he went to the older men and they gave him some advice. They said, if thou will be a servant unto this people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. In other words, our words that we speak to folks can make them uh be with us or for or against us i believe that there is way to say anything to people and get them to do what you want them to do and and what i mean by that is take for example in the workplace uh if you want your team to be a team and pull together uh they ought to see you encouraging them uh they ought to see you supporting them they ought to see you doing the work that you ask them to do. In other words, our words and the way we speak to people. But here he took, he had the advice from the older folks. But he, he, he made a choice to go to his boys, to the ones he ran with, and take their advice and see what they had to say about the situation. And they gave him some different things. In other words, they said to him, you tell the people, if you think my father was harsh to you, I'm going to be harsher. Uh, 
Uh, so already, you know, he, he's putting these people in a position that they're on the defensive. But the thing about it is, the first thing, his first mistake was he listened to some unseasoned people. These were the people he grew up with. You can't rely on your clique for advice. You must learn how to seek advice from people who have been through some things, some people who have some wisdom and some insight. We can't listen to the clique and run with them. We've got to get those people. It's just like driving a car. If you've never driven a car, who are you going to get to teach you? Somebody who don't even know what a key looks like? It's not going to work out well. Those that are running with you and, 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 and you think in your mind that their advice is going to help you advance in this race of life. Sometimes that race or that advice is not meant to advance you. It's meant to keep you in the same place where you are. Keep you right where they are. So his first mistake was that he listened to some unseasoned people. He listened to some people that, that never led anybody. He listened to some people that had never been in a a power a, a place of power. So they don't have a clue in, in, as to how to deal with the people. The second mistake was he listened to some insecure people. Sometimes your friends will give you advice that's beneficial to them. In other words, uh, let's take this example. You you having some trouble in your marriage, so you run to your single girlfriend, and she's been single for a long time. Her advice to you is, I wouldn't stay in that. I'm, I let him go. Why is she telling you to let your husband go and not telling you to pray to God and seek God and get on your knees and work your marriage out? Because she wants you in the same place that she is. So he listened to some insecure people. He listened to people that had grew up with him, that had worked for him. And they were probably afraid to lose their position with him. Insecurity, insecurity will make you do some crazy stuff. Insecurity leads to jealousy. Insecurity leads to you giving people wrong advice because you don't want to see them get ahead of you. You don't want to see them excel over you. So here he is listening to his boys, and they probably don't want to see him excel in the things of God. The third mistake that he made was he listened to some unspiritual people. You can't, you can't look for spiritual answers in unspiritual people. He received advice from two different sources. The first source was the elders who were connected with God. The second source was the young crowd who was not connected with God. Let me tell you, bad sources equal bad information. Bad information will lead you to bad choices. We've got to stop seeking spiritual advice from unspiritual people. We've got to stop going to people who can't give you any insight into what's going on in your situation. They can only give you what they think and what they feel, but they, they, they haven't consulted God about anything for you concerning you or even with themselves. We've got to stop. Seeking advice just because somebody has pastor or, or reverend or evangelist, whatever the title is, look at the fruit. Look at how they're progressing. Look at how they're being pruned and used. Let me tell you something. We live in the world, but the world can't solve our problems. The world can't give us all the answers that we seek. There is a wonderful thing in being able to go to our older generation for advice. Go to our older generation for some wisdom. What was the result of, of this king and, and him using the wrong information and the wrong advice? His kingdom wind up being divided. What I'm saying is unspiritual advice and unspiritual decisions can cause you to be separated. Separated from God and it will bring division, it will bring confusion, it will bring chaos into a situation. 
God is looking for people who is willing to trust him and to follow him and make godly decisions about their life and how they're going to walk with him. I've already said it before, but in this life, you're going to be required every day to make decisions. Some are tougher than others. Decisions that will affect you. Decisions that will affect your family. De decisions that will even affect those in the body of Christ around you. But it's important that you use some godly wisdom when making these decisions. It's important that you listen to the right people. It's important that you make sure what is being told to you is lining up with the word of God. So when you're making your decisions, when you're seeking your advice, make sure you're talking to some seasoned people. Make sure you're talking to some spiritual people. Make sure the people that you're, you're, you're seeking out are secure in who they are and where they are in their walk of life. The book of Joshua tells us about making decisions. And it says that Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that are on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All I'm saying in your decisions going forward tonight, tomorrow, make sure that your decisions are being lined up or tested and tried by the word of God. It's time to make a choice. There's an old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You'll fall for some bad advice and might wind up making some bad choices and bad decisions. We've all been there. But make sure that we are not going to unspiritual people for spiritual advice. Told you we wouldn't be with you long tonight. Um... Keeping it short and to the point. We can't ask everybody everything. We can't tell everybody everything. We can't share everything with everybody. Even your closest friends are not meant to know everything there is about you. Seek spiritual advice from spiritual folks. Go to some of these people that have wisdom and some knowledge and been through some things and can tell you how to get out, can tell you how to operate in your faith, can tell you how, how they've been brought out of things. I was at work today. I was standing outside and I was listening to a group of young people and how they just were so disrespectful of the older people that were in their presence. They didn't care what they said, how they said it, cuss words flying and everything. But they were overlooking the wisdom that was right in their presence. They were overlooking people that were around them that could tell them how to get out of that relationship, how that man is not good for you. How, but more importantly, they can tell you how God loves you, how he can save you. All I'm saying is be careful in your choices, be careful in your words, and be careful who you talk to and you seek advice from. Before we leave tonight, as always, we want to just say we're so grateful for being here tonight. If you have prayer requests, you can put them in the comments and um We'll pray with you. Um, if you want to call after the show, the number is 864-663-6333. And we'll be more than happy to talk with you um, at that time. Um, thank you, Denise. Thank you, Angela. If this is your first time, we want to thank you tonight for joining us. Um, I just can't say it enough. Be careful. We're living in a time where people, you know, the devil will give you 10% of the truth to get you to believe 90% of the lie. In other words, these people that you're seeking advice from, 
They'll give, give you 10% of what you want to hear. Maybe I should say it the other way around. They'll give you 10% of what they think you should hear. The other, the rest of I mean, people will tell you a lot of time, like I said before, what benefits them. Not worrying about that you have to live, live with the consequences. We all going through stuff and, and, um, And last couple of days have been kind of rough, um, but we're pushing through, and that's why uh, we're going to get off kind of early tonight. But if you want to call, 864-663-6333, and we'll be more than happy to talk with you. Then we invite you to go to faithexpressions.net if you want to hear some great music, um, take you into the night. You, we, um, you're more than welcome to do that. For those of you that have joined us tonight, Thank you, and you pray for me, and I'll pray for you, and uh, we'll watch God move. Again, thank you, and as we go into the night, I wish you sweet sleep. I wish you peace on tomorrow. I pray that God orders your words, your steps, and he orders your decisions on tomorrow night or on tomorrow, and that he guides you to people that will give you spiritual advice and that will help you make decisions in your life that will benefit you, that will advance you, that will keep you encouraged, and that will help you on this journey of life. Um, we all need encouragement. We all need to need, need, uh, sometimes we need to pull strength from other people. But I pray that God leads us to people that when they are strengthening us, that they are pulling us in the right direction. I talk about it all the time. A PPP partner, a push-pull pray partner. Somebody that can push you out of something or pull you out of something and pray you through some things. And I pray that God surrounds you with people that will do that for you. People that are not insecure about where you are going in, in your walk with God. People that are willing to sit on the pew with you. Or sit and sit, at, you know, just sit by you, stand by you, and watch you be elevated, knowing that in due season and in due time, if God is going to elevate them, He will do that. But while He's elevating you, while He's elevating my friend, while He's elevating my sister or my brother, I'm not insecure. I'm going to push them, I'm going to pull them, and I'm going to pray for them. And I'm not going to give them advice. That will cause them to fall. Y'all be blessed tonight. Have a great day on tomorrow. And we'll see you next time. Bye.